This is Twit. Late yesterday, the news broke, and it was kind of bound to happen at this point, uh, that Montana became the first state to officially ban TikTok. This move is seen by many as a bellwether for other states that are looking to impose similar bans on TikTok. And joining us to discuss this news is Caroline Mims Nice from The Atlantic, who wrote about this actually back in April. So just last month when the state approved the ban initially. So welcome to the show, Caroline. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. It's great to get you on. Um, So we've got some ground to cover here. So why don't we start with the reporting that you did one month ago and uh, just kind of catches up to base, uh, up to date right now. Montana at that time had approved the ban, of course. Uh, That followed, that actually came after a few months of debate uh, in Montana legislature. What were the primary talking points, the primary reasons at that time, I imagine they're the same now, but just give us a little highlight, I suppose. So I think the best way to understand this bill, uh, according to the experts that I talked to, is really as a cry of grievance, more than sort of a practical piece of legislation uh, that was sort of carefully implemented and structured uh, that will become law any minute. Um, although it is, it has been signed by the governor and is on its way, is law and on its way to take effect in 2024. Um, this, I talked to a lot of uh, technologists and policy experts that had questions about whether this bill could even work <laughs> from a technological perspective, from a legal perspective. There are constitutional questions. Uh, One expert I talked to, I loved this analogy, uh, compared it to legalizing flying in the state of California or in the state of Montana or California. Uh, You can say now people can fly, but people aren't really built to fly. (laughs) Uh, It's sort of like, you know, people are going to go flabbing their wings. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, you know, our internet is not really structured in such a way that like it recognizes the state of Montana and we can just throw up a geo gate, uh, really quickly. So I think that's sort of the, that's the way that I'm thinking about it is sort of a nonsense bill, but a very real bill (laughs) that is, has been passed by the legislature and signed into law. So, okay. So what exactly are they stipulating? Because I, you know, I kind of failed to mention in the intro, this doesn't just impact TikTok. You know, this is also Telegram, uh, WeChat. Is it Timu, Timu from, uh, I guess that's for government devices. But anyways, Montana is, is going full board down this road saying no TikTok in the, in the state. None of these apps in the government, which you can imagine that's kind of like a signal that like, hey, and we'd like to take this even further. I mean, what what does this exactly call for? It just says no one in the state can access TikTok. And who's responsible for that? Is the visitor or is it the tech company that you know allows for that to happen? So this bill targets TikTok specifically, forbids it from operating in the state okay. uh, and uh, app stores. So pretty much Apple and Google. Right. Um, and it implements a $10,000 fine uh, for anyone that is offered the ability to download TikTok. So it's not like you go to your app store, you type in TikTok, and then you click it and it says, no, you can't download this. Uh, you literally cannot, it, there cannot be a TikTok offered to you. Um, so it's, I think it's important to say that uh, it is not, uh, you know, p- individual users are not going to be fined under the structure of this bill. Don't worry. That's a good thing. Yeah, uh, good. People making content creators uh, that you're going to be hit with some large fine. Um, but again, uh, there are questions about the implementation of how that would work. Uh, so it'll and whether it's even legal to do so it'll be really interesting to watch so many questions as far as that's concerned like when i think of the technological impl- uh, implications of this apple and google have app stores it's very easy for apple and google to say don't show this app to these users you know often that's done by country but this would be by state i suppose and i'm guessing infrastructure wise that's uh, relatively easy uh, to build in but like from my Android perspective, I've been on Android forever. It's very easy to sideload apps. 
So finding, you know, the the install and the install file is no big deal. So then does the responsibility come down on the ISP that allows traffic to TikTok in that case, in which case I imagine VPN operators are very happy. So the bill does actually target app stores. So there was an earlier iteration discussion about uh, targeting the ISPs and that language was removed. Um, okay. So uh, it and it, Apple and Google uh, through or a trade group that represents Apple and Google has said that they do not have the technological ability to do this. Like you said, on the country level, it's somewhat doable. Uh, but on the state level, we just don't have the technology. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the funny ironies several experts pointed out to me was that in order to have the infrastructure to do this, we would need an internet more structured like China's, uh, where there is surveillance infrastructure built in. Uh, and we just don't have that. We have, we generally in the US uh, have a, a operate along principles of a free, uh, accessible internet. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a funny tension there. Yeah, 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 no kidding. Now, um, like I said, kind of in the lead into this story, this is being seen as a an example or a possibly, a, you know, telling the future of what other states uh, might do um, in, in a similar fashion, whether they can or not, like you point out, like we don't even know if this is even enforceable. It's cer most certainly going to be challenged um, both by TikTok, I have to imagine, uh, they're pushing back on this, but also, you know, uh, for rights activists, they're probably targeting this. Like, are we gonna, are we going to see more in the in in the light of this action in Montana happening in other states? And yeah, where where exactly is this going to happen if that happens? So I think we're in sort of a wait and see mode. Uh, Montana was the big escalation. Yeah. Uh, and now we've got to sort of watch this play out uh, in the courts and see what goes on. Um, it is a lot of states have already taken action to ban it from government devices. So that's a little different. It's like how your work can uh, ban you from visiting websites or downloading applications without that being a First Amendment violation. Uh, the state governments and actually the federal government have banned the ability to access the app on state owned devices. So it'll be interesting to see whether other states try to push it further. Um, and a lot of states have done that. So, um, a, a, you know, I think it's 25 or so. Uh, so I don't know that it's a specific region or mm. uh, kind of state. Yeah. I mean, that's another question that I had is, is kind of the, uh, the political breakdown. I mean, this is obviously, it's a very politically motivated decision, um, to do this. And I'm just curious, like, is that a, is that a bipartisan, uh, effort, uh, or is it one, one party more than the other? I feel like I've heard kind of talking points for this on both sides of the aisle. I think that's right. Um, you know, in the National Congress, we've definitely seen bipartisan concerns around data collection, around mm -hmm. content moderation on TikTok, um, and obviously national security. Like, I, this is a much broader conversation that's going on, and I think both parties have expressed concern. What is TikTok saying? I mean, I'm I'm sure they're saying we don't like this one bit, but <laughs> have they have they given any hints as far as kind of like the direction they intend to go since this is an escalation of what we've seen before? So we don't know what their legal strategy will be here. Um, we do know that they have said that the bill violates the First Amendment rights of people living in Montana uh, and that they plan to defend the ability to access the app. Um, so, you know, they are very much, uh, you know, against this. And it again, we're I think we're just waiting to see the yeah. battle that ensues from here. There's a lot that we yeah. obviously don't know because this is really the beginning of uh, of a battle. Uh, anyways, I'm just, you know, I got a feel for the kids, the kids that want to use the TikToks. <laughs> and, uh, you know, a lot of experts that I talked to, a couple of them said that they really doubt that there will ever be a day where you are driving into Montana and you cross that state line and, and TikTok just 
woof, like goes away. <laughs> right. right. Uh, for technological and also legal reasons. Uh, so, you know, I think it's important to sort of hedge this in that uh, it, we, we don't totally know where this is going. Um, it certainly could have, if it, you know, goes all the way up to the Supreme Court, it could have a broader impact depending yeah. on where, how they rule. Um, but, you know, for now, I think there's a lot of questions about this bill uh, and whether it can become a re- feasibly become a reality. Yeah. And I'm sure before we know the answer to that, we will see other states following in the footsteps that kind of raises the the importance of figuring out can these things actually survive um, is like what it, what is the temperature of this surviving um, a challenge? It kind of feels to me like it, it's unlikely, but I don't know. Are you hearing anything on that regard? A lot of the experts that I, you know, a lot of the experts that I talked to uh, really saw it as political, more political grandstanding yeah. uh, than an actual practical bill. Um, I think one thing that is interesting um, is, uh, you know, we can look at this in the arc of privacy legislation in the U.S. This is one how one expert sort of put it to me is uh, the federal government has almost sort of abdicated its responsibility, arguably, to regulate these technology companies. So what you're seeing is these kind of state bills pop up. You know, you the California passed its own privacy legislation. Uh, you see this Montana bill. There's all kinds of bills where uh, we're grappling with these bigger, broader issues around uh, privacy um, and data collection in the U.S. And uh, I think that this really gets at that. Um, but it, again, I'm just excited. I mean, in a news reporter kind of way to see what, where this goes from here. Mm-hmm. It's a really interesting story. It really is. It really is. And I appreciate you uh, taking a few minutes out of your busy schedule to talk with us about it. Caroline Mims Nice writes for The Atlantic, theatlantic.com. If people want to find you online and follow your work, follow what you're doing, where can they find you? I'm at Mimsy on Twitter. Are we st- Still using Twitter. <laughs> some, some of us um, are. Some, some aren't. You know? Are we? I saw, uh, I saw no that study verified. that said like 60% of Twitter users have uh, like backed away from it or at least taken a break or something. So there's that. Yeah, I was looking at that. I'm not on Mastodon yet. I just got on Blue Sky. Uh, but, you know, uh, I guess the better question is what social media? Could you all tell me what social media people are using? All of so, them. All of the of above. Them, yeah, exactly. It, it, it's a lot more everywhere. splintered now yeah. than I think it has been in a very long time. So I think you're doing it. You're doing OK. I it sounds like you're doing OK. Yeah. Caroline, thank you so thank much. You it was all. a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to talk with you. And uh, we will see you very soon. Appreciate it. Thank you. All Bye-bye. right. Take care. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Future proof your business, retain top talent, upskill your team, and gain essential insights with training for individuals, teams, and leaders. Stay compliant with regulations and identify risks and weaknesses before they become problematic. Fill out the form at go.acilearning.com/twit for information on a free 2-week trial for your team. 